Hello and welcome. Today is a big day because you guys are going to receive the knowledge that will allow you to start real participation in our project. Because yes, I'm going to start showing a real example how you can actually uh, use naive tokenization in Java project. But more important, I'm going to show you how the framework actually executes this documentation and how you can participate in improving the framework, taking some tasks uh, or challenges and solving them and putting yourself on the map. Uh, okay, so if you're not familiar with Java, you're not planning to use tokenization in Java or to do anything with Java at all, uh, then probably you can safely skip this video because there will be no theoretical material, will be pure source code, will be only hardcore with Java and our framework. So yeah, it's up to you to decide whether you do need to keep watching it or not, uh, but I do hope that you will continue. So let's jump to the main part. So this is basically an official repository on GitHub. Um, so any of you can clone, create own repo. But what is important, for each of our video, we will have a special uh, branch that you should use for this particular, particular video. In each particular video, we will discuss uh, not only topics, but particular questions and uh, elements in the source code that one can uh, change and tasks that anyone basically could take. So the main purpose is that you not only uh, be able then to use the library, but you should be able to know how it works and how you can participate uh, very this day. And in fact, uh, when you're looking at this video, maybe all of the tasks that we're going to uh, discuss already closed, unfortunately, but uh, you still can see the source code in the way uh, it's actually presented here in this lesson by just checking out this branch. But if you're lucky enough and you're an early adopter, you basically can participate and create a pull request. I will review it and if everything is awesome, I will merge it. But let's uh, slowly move to uh, actual our topic and we're going to speak about tokenization and tokenization with the IEF library. By the way, IEF is artificial intelligence framework. This is like global revision to the framework. And for now we're going to speak about naive tokenization. I'm going to show you how to do tokenization in Java with uh, IEF framework. So let me switch here. In order to uh, uh, in order to use IEF, you just need to um, include repository, just official repository, Maven repository of IEF, and just end one dependency. It's basically if we're going to use version beta one, but yeah, it might be already beta two. And let me show you a quick example of actual tokenization process with IEF. So here I have a txt, this is one string, this is basically a um, uh, text from my YouTube channel and let me start and see how it works. So as you can see I'm creating instance of token splitter which is actually should be tokenizer and I'm printing whatever is returned by the method split that an input has txt and return tokens. So here we can see the list of tokens. I uh, said before this is naive splitting, so you might see like comma inside of the token or uh, semicolon or I don't know like uh, quotes or again comma or let me find there yes things like this. This is uh, recognized as one token email slash math but uh, obviously this is two token that should not be combined together so yeah this is naive uh, uh, to tokenization that we have spoke about before and this is a way how you can uh, do this naive tokenization in Java but now let's see how this naive tokenization actually implemented and how you can participate and put your name on the list of the contributor of a repository and then of the day this is what we need to uh, put ourselves on the map so this is your ability okay so let's start with a token splitter that I just show you. Here the class of token splitter, package IO, IEF language token. This is uh, the source code of the repository that I just show you, this one. 
Yes. Um, and we basically have just a full constructor that we will, f will speak later. But what I want to show you is the method split. In input, it received the um, string text. So what he actually doing with text? First of all, uh, he had this separate extractor. This is some mage class that extracts from the text all um, token separate, uh, separators. In our case, this is space, new line, uh, and stuff like this. We are not going to discuss at very this moment how this guy works. Uh, let's keep it for now. I will explain it to you a little bit later. And if there is no any separator, uh, or like our token separator extractor failed to actually extract anything, uh, then we're just returning a uh, list with one element that includes the whole text. But in case uh, if everything fine, and we do have separators, we are creating regular expression. Uh, we have regular express cooker that basically in input uh, requires list of separators and creates a regular expression uh, that can be used to split the text. And then this regular expression is basically used just to execute text split method by this regular expression. So this line is just a string line to separate uh, one string by the regular expression onto many, uh, many substrings. And this token is uh, basically returned with uh, maybe slight uh, filtering. And by filtering I mean we're just filtering all empty tokens. So we're returning uh, all the tokens that are non-empty. And that's all. Okay, so this is high-level overview of the method split. And here is actually the first task in this class. Uh, let me just explain what does this mean. So to do is uh, to do, <laughs> obviously. This number 252 is basically a number of the issues. So you can go to issue tracker and put 252 and you will see the issue here. Uh, issue usually mark with difficulty level. This is easy, this is task. And this particular issue means that we need to rename token splitter into tokenizer because it needs to be more consistent with um, terminology that has a natural language processing. But back to the topic. Uh, how regular cooker actually works? So how uh, it prepares the regular expression by the separators? This is actually the really, really um, simple logic that basically translates any um, any characters into a string of regular expression. The only thing that it's do is uh, secures some character that are not safe in regular expression. Let's actually have a quick example of how regular expression um, regular exp cooker works. So uh, here is my uh, separators that I have. And I'm going to put this list of separators to my reg cooker and see the result of the cooker. The result of the cooker will be this one. Uh, here is a new line. Let me remove the new line to be uh, more uh, more simple. Yes, so this is my output. And as you can see, it basically secures dot because dot is a valid um, regular expression character. And in our case, we do need real dot and not the regular expression part. So just uh, do this basic secure and add some other attributes that basically uh, make this a correct regular expression. That's it, nothing more. So this is a really simple part of the logic. Uh, okay. Uh, we have one task with regular expression cooker. Uh, I do think that the same functionality should be implemented in some open source library. So one of the tasks is to find open source library that uh, actually does exactly this, prepares the regular expression, checks whether the regular expression is correct, because right now there is no check whether this is a correct regular expression or not. It's blindlessly just populates regular expression template and that's all. So this is one more task that you could take. Okay, so back to the topic. We have discussed how the regular expression cooks the regular expression based on the list of separators. But let's discuss how we're actually um, extracting these guys from the text. Let's go to our interface and uh, let's see how many implementation of this interface we, we have. Um, let me go to 
package list. Uh, here is our interface. And we have actually two implementation, predefined one and probability based. I'm not going to speak about probability based because we haven't discussed theoretical topics about it yet. But I'm going to speak about predefined token separators. This is really, really stupid one. Uh, these guys basically always return predefined list of separators, uh, no matter what. So no matter which text you're um, putting inside, even if this string is null, it always just return and predefined stuff. And this guy need to be revisited. First of all, we need to revisit default list of token separators because right now we have only three. We might need more or we need to some kind of proof that three is okay. I'm not speaking about dot commas and stuff like this. By separators here, I mean all the characters that um, uh, doesn't have any visual representation, like new line, like like space, like um, slash t, uh, because dots, uh, commas, and semicolon. Um, this is uh, a different topic. We're going to speak about them differently. And yes, for now we just care about all the characters that basically do not have visual representation. Uh, okay, this is the first task, and the second task is uh, extract the list to some configuration file, because right now it's basically hard-coded here in the field, which is really bad practice. We need to extract this uh, separators list to separate config, so we will provide default uh, list uh, in our library, but any customer and anyone who using the library can basically override by providing his own list of the characters. Uh, so this is almost it. Uh, now you you do know uh, our main repository. You do know which branch you supposed to use uh, to basically have the source code that is consistent with this video. However, if you're going to create a pull request, please do create a pull request again the master main, uh, master branch. And I'm promised to review all the pull requests and approve the first pull request they're actually implementing or fixing uh, the changes. We do have our official website, but it's kind of outdated and we're going to start updating really, really soon. But this is it. So thank you for being here with me. Now you're ready to start your first contribution, real contribution to the um, NLP framework. And now you do know how to do uh, naive tokenization uh, from the Java with AIF. So you can start using it in your project. And I'm really looking forward to see what you guys are going to build actually with this knowledge. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.